Here we have a graph of number of flies, their population. That's why you have this letter P here, the population of flies as time goes on in days. So uh, experimental biologists often want to know the rates at which populations grow under controlled laboratory conditions. So in this figure, it shows how the number of fruit flies grew in a controlled 50-day experiment. The graph was made by counting flies at regular intervals, plotting a point for each count, and then drawing a smooth curve through the plotted points. And here is the shape of the graph. Uh, if we want to know the average rate of change from the 23rd day until the 45th day, we look at uh, the population change went from 23 to 45. And, excuse me, the number of days went from 23rd day to the 45th day. And the number of flies, 150 on the 23rd day, up to 340 on the 45th day. So the change in the population was 190. The change in the time was 22 days. So on average, that is an increase of 190 over 22, or about nine flies per day. So here's the calculation, uh, change in population over change in time. And we said that comes out to be about 8.6 flies per day. But if we also look at the uh, points on the graph, uh, the secant line that joins points P and Q has the same slope. In other words, we can always think of an average rate of change as the slope of a secant line. And what if we took different points on the curve? So we'll always use this uh, point at day 23. Let's say we wanted to find the rate of change on that day not between two days, but on the 23rd day. So what I would do is take the point Q, which originally was at the 45th day, and I'll move it down the line, or move it down the curve, excuse me, and move point Q towards point P. So we see over here in this chart, the slopes of those different secant lines as point Q moves towards point P. And we see the secant line is getting steeper and this solid black line uh, connecting points A and B is the tangent line to the curve that has just been drawn in uh, by hand, eyeballing it. And we see that the slope of the secant line is beginning to approach the slope of that line AB. So let's find the slope of that tangent line. So here we're going to uh, use as an example the graph y equals x squared. So I've uh, chosen the point that I want to find the slope of the tangent line at, at the point x equals 2, y equals 4, 2 comma 4. So I'm going to choose some interval over the x-axis. I'll let that interval be h. So uh, there is the other point uh, that I'm going to use to find the slope of my secant line, and I'm going to let that point approach this point. In other words, I'm going to let h approach 0. So the coordinates of this point, then, are x-coordinate 2 plus h, and then my y-coordinate is f of 2 plus h, or 2 plus h quantity squared. So then the slope of that line is the change in y over the change in x. So my delta y is this y value minus uh, this y value, 4. So 2 plus h quantity squared minus 4 is my delta y. And my delta x, of course, is h. So here's the slope of the secant line, 2 plus h squared minus 4 over h. And if we scroll down here, here's the calculation to show that simplifies to h plus 4. So then the limit as h approaches 0, or the limit as q, point q, as point q approaches point p, uh, h approaches 0, and the limit of h plus 4 as h approaches 0 is, of course, 4. So the slope uh, at that point of the parabola is 4. So that leads us to the definition of slope of a curve at a point. Here's our general diagram, some curve. We choose a point A and some uh, distance away, some distance h away on the x-axis, a plus h. And so the slope of the curve is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h 
minus f of a over h. In other words, it's the change in y. This is f of a plus h. This is f of a for our y values. And over the change in x, h. So change in y over change in x. This is just the slope of the line. And we take the limit as h approaches 0. And that will give us the slope. M stands for slope, of course. The slope of the graph at point A. Okay, so let's do an example. So here's my formula for slope of, this, uh, at a, of a curve at a point. F of a, plus, F of a plus H minus F of A is the change in Y over H. That's the change in X. And the limit as H approaches 0. So here's the equation I'll, I'm going to use. Uh, X equals 7.8 plus 9.2 T minus 2.1 T cubed. So my point A will be T uh, at whatever time T I'm interested in. But let's take our equation. Wherever we see our variable T, we will plug in A plus H. That's the F of A plus H. So 7.8 plus 9.2 times A plus H minus 2.1 times A plus H cubed. That's this portion right here of it. Minus quantity, of course. Uh, I'm going to, everywhere I see a, a T now, I'll plug in an A. So 7.8 plus 9.2 times A minus 2.1 times A cubed. And that minus sign here uh, multiplies through the whole expression. So here, uh, this is the what I get when I do A plus H cubed. If you want to double check it, you can pause the video right here and check out the math. Here's a plus h squared, and then multiply it by a plus h once more for a plus h cubed, and gives me this expression here. And again, you can pause the video and try the math yourself if you want to. Uh, I'm eliminating like terms and combining like terms, uh, and it simplifies to this expression right here, 9.2 minus 6.3a squared. Uh, of course, my variable in my original equation was t, so I'm going to re rewrite it with a being t. And there's my answer, 9.2 minus 6.3t squared. So the slope everywhere on this graph, whatever value I pick for t, I need only to plug it in here, and this expression, this expression will tell me the slope of the graph at that point. Just for fun, I made an Excel spreadsheet that is going to do the difference quotient formula for me, the f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Uh, so here's the equation uh, that we were looking at, 7.8 plus 9.2t minus 2.1t cubed. I have chosen to find the slope at the spot uh, a equals 3.5. So here is f of a. I took 3.5 and I plugged into the equation, and I get negative 50.04. I'm going to start off with the difference on the x-axis of 5, an h value of 5. So here's my f, or excuse me, so 3.5 plus 5 is 8.5. And when I plug that into the equation, the f of a plus h, I get this number. And then when I do the difference quotient of f of a plus this number minus f of a all over h, uh, 5, I get this number. And I'm going to let h shrink. And I'm going to let it approach 0 down this column. And so I let Excel perform all the calculations for me. And I can see the slope of the secant line between the points uh, on the curve is approaching this number here, negative 67.975. So that's what I have Excel uh, summarized for me up in this box right here. And then I also have uh, Excel I have it draw the graph and uh, draw the slope of the point or the line at the point 3.5. A equals 3.5. So now when I go back to the answer that I got, uh, 9.2 minus 6.3t squared, and I plug in for t 3.5, you can try it yourself. I get the same answer that my Excel spreadsheet was approaching a slope of negative 67.975. Okay, so going back to our Excel file, there we see the slope approach negative 67.975. So that agrees uh, 
with the answer we got algebraically plugging in 3.5 into that answer. Uh, just for fun, let's try some other values. Let's say what's the value at, oh, I don't know, say 4. So you can see Excel does all the calculations very quickly. Now my slope approaches negative 91.6, and this doesn't update. This is the only part that doesn't update this, uh, but there's the graph of it. And if you were to take your uh, answer, your algebraic answer, and plug in 4 for A, uh, then that's what you would get, or excuse me, for T, 4 for T, you would get negative 91.6. And if you plugged in 2, you would get negative 16, and so on. 